drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos what's up guys this is manoj shukrani i welcome you all on behalf of the adpedia world first up is bells we are about to take off with the first topic and that will be what is professional negligence outline auditors liability in this regard this question has been asked in one of the ce final examination past paper as well which was ce final attempt for main 2009 so what does professional negligence actually mean so guys before understanding what does professional negligence mean let's first understand the meaning of negligence okay negligence is something that you are supposed to do something okay but apart from doing that stuff you followed some other kind of code okay and you followed some other uh, standard and you basically neglected what you should have done rather than by doing what you actually did so that is negligence your mother told you up okay go and bring some milk from mother dairy you just went over there and you bring the curd from there okay so what happened is you reached to the right place however you took the wrong product from there and why did that happen to you why because you were not aware okay you were following something which was not supposed to be done from your end so you neglected a few of the instructions which are meant to be followed by you however you didn't that so this is what negligence actually mean now if i'll talk about negligence in the terms of your profession our profession is a very dignified profession guys it's a extremely prestigious institution we all are aware of this fact now since it's a very dignified body it's a very prestigious institution wherein we are striving our level best to become chartered accountants one day so we need to be aware that our institute is having some of the guidelines for us which we need to comply in each and every kind of situation because we belong to that prime community and certainly we need to adhere each and every kind of duty and obligation that our institute expects out of us so in that sense if i'll talk about what will professional negligence professional negligence basically will mean the failure to perform those duties according to the accepted professional standards resulting in some kind of loss or some of the damage to the party to whom the duty is owed by that i simply mean that somehow uh, like you got involved with one of the client okay and you are supposed to perform the duties as per the account standards the professional standards which have been like mentioned by the institute of chartered accountants of india however apart from complying with those accepted standards you somehow did something else which resulted in the loss and damage to that client so who is responsible to take care of whose onus is basically there who is responsible to take up the accountability of that loss it is absolutely you why because you somehow involved yourself in some of the other conduct which resulted into your professional negligence so it simply means that you fail to perform your duty according to the accepted professional standards which resulted in some of the loss or damage to your client that is to the party to whom your duty was owed that's the meaning of professional negligence now if i'll talk about your liability as an auditor in this particular regard so we need to first understand what the elements what all will be covered as the element of negligence negligence which is uh, culpable it will consist into three parts one the existence of duty you need to first understand that your duty is existent in that particular circumstance okay you are responsible for something you are owed to one of the party and uh, somehow uh, by that performance of the act that you will be doing for them be it audit be it any kind of consultancy matter be it anything apart from that professional services so uh, you are supposed to perform that particular act with certain degree of care and competence okay you can't ignore that fact that is number one your existence of duty that is the number one element number two element is that somehow you didn't fulfill that duty in a proper way or i should say that a breach occurred in that particular duty number two that is the next element of negligence and number three that will be the loss finally so there existed a duty there uh, happened uh, the occurrence of a breach and finally that breach resulted into loss that loss or detriment which was being suffered by the party to whom the duty was owed 
as a result of negligence so these are the three elements if i'll talk about these are the things which will be the prerequisite of any of the counter thing which is going to happen to you first there should be your duty that is your responsibility to perform something there happened some of the breach and finally due to that breach it happened it certainly happened with a kind of loss and which which didn't happen in a way which is something which is detrimental to the interest of that particular client of yours these are the three elements next comes your basis of liability so the liability of professional negligence may arise either under the statute that is under the compliance under the law or under an agreement it may happen a case wherein you are not supposed to uh, pay back to that particular client of yours under any kind of statute however you have signed some kind of agreement okay now that agreement is binding on you and that's going to create your liability so your basis of liability can be either of the one under statute or under any kind of agreement now comes the fourth point that is the nature of liability so the liability of a professional negligence may be number 1 it could be civil number 2 it could be criminal as well so further i must tell you guys it is extremely uh, the institute is extremely i i won't say the word harsh but extremely disciplined in a way that it may happen to situation where the disciplinary action for professional misconduct under the ca act may also be applicable with any of the persons who have been involved in professional negligence and what's going to be the liability for the client so if the client if this particular client of yours basically suffers any kind of loss through the action of you then you should be liable and your liability would be determined on the basis of the contract of engagement that you'll be having according to which you as an auditor had taken to provide the service to them that's going to determine your liability as far as you are responsible to repay that client back now if in case there could be a situation wherein you have happened to like involved getting yourself involved in such kind of professional negligence wherein you have also provided some kind of loss to another party that is the third party so what's going to happen in that case that will be decided under the fifth point that is the liability to third party so when a loss has been like suffered by a third party who is certainly not the privy to the arrangement between you and your client however for determining whether you are liable or not it is very much necessary to find out whether you as an auditor owed any duty to that third party or not and if in case you owed some kind of liability to that third party as well then you are again liable to pay back the damages or the loss which has been like borne by that uh, third party back to them and lastly expectations from the auditor what is expected out of you as an auditor wherever you get yourself involved in any of the engagement services number 1 that you as an auditor whenever you get appointed under any kind of statute or under any agreement to carry out any kind of professional work it is actually guys presumed that you shall be carrying out that work completely and that too with due care and diligence which is expected out of any professional that is number 1 number 2 you as auditor are expected to discharge your duties according to the generally accepted accounting standards as well as generally accepted auditing standards which are existing at the time when the professional work is carried out that is something which is extremely important to note that if you have been like appointed to provide them the audit services it, this is something which is very much genuine and very much generally accepted that you will be offering your services taking into consideration any kind of gap that is generally accepted of auditing standard and accounting standard while you will be like performing your professional work which is being carried out and lastly what is expected out of you that either in case of absence of the required skill or the failure to exercise the reasonable skill it can give rise to any of the action for damage for professional negligence as well so these are the major three things which are expected from you as an auditor this is something which you need to be aware and conscious each and every time you fix up any of your assurance services or professional engagement services with any of your client so guys this was the question uh, which was asked in one of the ce final attempts that was ce final may 2009 what is professional negligence and what are your liability as an auditor in this particular case i hope i am able to provide you each and every stuff which has been like presented in this slide with enumerate kind of examples which uh, will help you in understanding this topic very well perfect guys 
Shall we proceed further? Cool. Let's move towards the next topic, and that will be outline the auditor's liability in respect of taking assistance in the discharge of his duties. Outlining the auditor's liability in respect of taking assistance in the discharge of his duties. That can be broadly classified into four categories. Number one, personal character. Number two, code of conduct. Number three, work done by others. And finally, number four, standards on auditing. Let's understand them one by one. Let's start with personal character. So, guys, any contract, any contract involving any kind of personal skill or other personal qualifications cannot be assigned or delegated. We all know that. Okay. This is something which is going to require a personal skill. Uh, let's suppose uh, I must tell you about this thing with an example, and that's about the beauty salon. Okay, you have. Okay, I'm not talking about you. Uh, now I'll talk about the film stars. Okay, we have Salman Khan, we have Shahrukh Khan, we have Amir Khan. Okay, they must have got their personal trainers all the way. Okay, who are extremely reputed in their already. They'll be like having their prestigious names in the market. Okay, they are having their personal salons. Okay, wherein they get their hair treatment done, where they get their facial treatment done, all the way. So that requires their personal skill. Okay, their personal qualification. Do you even think that they'll be like assigning that particular task to any other person around? Absolutely not. Believe me, guys. This is something which they have like been doing from the past almost twenty, twenty-five years by now. So the kind of hairdresser, or I'll I'll talk about the kind of hair expert that Amir Khan was having twenty years back. Definitely, he would be. there in the picture even today itself why because they develop that kind of taste with them they know their preferences straight away the kind of contracts that happen to be with the personal kind of skill okay this is something which is personally being done a personal skill is required in that okay that cannot be assigned or delegated in any of the way same goes with the work of auditor as well so the work of an auditor being a personal character being of a personal character must be performed either by him or her or by the persons under their supervision that is their articles since he himself remains fully responsible in that particular case so that is the kind of liability that an auditor usually gets in bonus if i'll talk about once he discharges his duties as a professional so that is the personal character even if the persons who have been like signed under you that is your trainees your articles even if they are doing some task on your behalf definitely in that particular case also you as an auditor are going to get responsible for that because that is something which is of personal character that is number 1 number 2 that is code of conduct so the ca act the chartered accountants act, act basically it recognizes this particular aspect very clearly that you need to follow the code of conduct code of conduct is extremely important that is something which basically provides us the kind of dignified reputation why because we as an auditor we as a chartered accountant basically follows that kind of code of conduct which is being provided by our dear institute of chartered accountants of india so the ca basically recognizes this aspect aspect very clearly and it makes it obligatory that reports on the financial statements should be signed either by the member or his partner that is something which is extremely clear that is the code of conduct number 3 is the work done by others so the uh, we all are aware of this fact that it's been mentioned under sa as well standard on auditing as well if in case we are getting our work done by another auditor or any other person so the auditor can get the work done by other persons whether professionally qualified or not however having said that he or she is expected to guide and supervise their work and are personally responsible for any kind of dereliction or duty or in the absence of any kind of skill or care in the performance of an audit then they shall be responsible for that as an auditor uh, they just uh, cannot afford, afford basically to have the ordinary uh, like shift of any of the part of their liability to their employees or assistants that is something which is not expected out of them they need to be personally responsible if in case they are getting their work done by others be it articles be it trainees be it about any other persons now finally the standards on auditing so the auditor's responsibility in respect of the work done by their assistants that is the articles or paid assistants or any other auditors or joint auditors or branch auditors or any kind of exp- uh, experts all these auditors responsibilities are basically have been like uh, laid on completely in the 
uh, standards on auditing as well so again that is extremely important to be complied with so if i'll talk about uh, in summarizing what has been uh, the auditor's liability in respect of taking the assistance in discharge of their duties remember even if you are getting uh, that personal shift in your assistance do ensure that you are basically personally responsible in any of the case next you need to be in the code while you take care of the code of conduct okay code of conduct is something which is extremely important to be followed because that has been something which is being introduced by uh, the dear institute only number 3 if in case you are getting your work done by other still you'll be like handsomely responsible for all the tasks that is being done by that person on your behalf as well and finally while discharging your duties you need to comply with the standards on auditing as well i'm sure that i have been like provided you complete entire examples wherein you'll be like able to understand what does your liability as an auditor will be if in case you are taking some of the assistance with this i'll say thank you on behalf of the edupedia world keep interacting by your questions queries in youtube comment boxes i will love to answer each one of your query and give answers If in case you have liked our video do give us a thumbs up stay connected that will help us in understanding your needs way 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 better guys thank you take care bye sayonara i'll see you in the next presentation with a lot more exciting topics bye